Hey guys, welcome to the channel. We are working on installing a solar system on our property and uh, we got the first battery a couple weeks ago so we got that installed already. It's all hung on the wall and we've got the other two batteries here to install and the inverter. So I'm going to show you how we did the mounting process on the, the batteries. We're going to do a step-by-step -step on how we are installing the batteries and the inverters. So we decided to put the batteries right on the ground but I wanted to secure them to the wall so that they wouldn't fall over and they'd be more secure safe so the kids if they were running around in here they didn't knock them over so what we did is we put a uh, this hole here if you put that at 25 and a half inches from the ground up that'll make it so the batteries will sit right inside these brackets there's a slotted hole here so you got a little bit of give and it'll make it so they won't hang on the bracket but it'll set in there and it'll keep it from falling uh, off the wall or tipping off the wall um, so this bracket here we ended up doing this is where the stud was so we did two long leg bolts right through the dura rock the plywood and then into the stud and uh, if you put them in the same spot so if, if you put the stud here every time and then you do that on the next one you'll end up with that just under eight inch gap which is what they require uh, for spacing so that works out really well. So before you start moving these around, what I found is you'll want to take these covers off. It makes it a lot easier because then you got a lift to hold on to. But one of the things that I found with taking these covers off is these screws are a pain in the butt to get out if you don't have the right screwdriver. So it's going to require a small tip screwdriver. But this is your standard, I believe it's a number one, or it's, it's, it's your standard smaller screw, Phillips screwdriver, star bit, whatever you want to call it. And so I had to do a modification to it. And I'll bring you up close and I'll show you what I'm show what I'm talking about here. So the screws in this cover that are right here is the same screw head uh, as the same pattern as uh, this one right here. So if you take your standard smaller Phillips screwdriver and you stick it in here, you see how sloppy it is? Well, what I had found is it just you can't bite the screw so it's really hard to get the screw up so what I did is I took the screwdriver and as you can see I ground the tip of it off and I used this screw as the test screw because it's just, like I said it's the same pattern as the other screw so you see how snug that is it doesn't doesn't have any play so what I did is I just kept grinding a little bit off each time until it got it until I stuck it in there and there was no play and I couldn't see any gap around it and that made it easier to take the screws out when I was trying to use this screwdriver, uh, I ended up stripping out one of the screws. Thankfully, I was able to get it out with this one after I made the modification. So there's a little tip for you. Um, take them off, get them out of the way right away, and then work on doing your install. Also, there's these nifty little handles down here that make it easier to lift if you have the cover off. In order for these batteries to sit flush on the ground or sit on the ground and have uh, this bracket work, we're at 25 and a half inches. The stud is here, so I just put one screw, one long screw here because I'm not too concerned about it having to hold all the weight, so I wasn't worried about these two hitting a stud. So I got one long one here and one long one here. I put these in because I believe really the only purpose of these is to help you line up and get the right height when you mount the inverter on top. I don't think they have any, I mean, they don't have any structural strength. They're super flimsy, super thin. So I think it's just there to help you line up the inverter. So once we get it all fastened to the wall, then we're going to slide the battery over. And I'll show you an easy way to get the battery popped up onto here where you could do it by yourself fairly easily. So as you can see here, I've got this one marked out. Here's where my two screw holes are going to go. And you'll notice that these two ended up on a stud. That's because I had to allow for a little extra space here because I'll have conduit coming down that'll need to come into the side of the conduit box that will be mounted on top of this battery. And that'll be my, my power that uh, I'm going to export to the grid. So I had to leave an extra gap so I could fit a 90 degree sweeping um, fitting onto the side of the, the box. So we're going to end up with a bigger gap there, but that's that works out perfect. Then this one here will um, have two screws on top anchored right into the studs so before you tighten these screws up it's a good idea to throw a level on here because these holes are quite large so it has a little room for play so you can go ahead and just kind of get it tipped to the right height so that it's perfectly level and then go ahead and fasten it up to the wall 
and I'm going to slide these three quarter inch boards underneath the inverter one side at a time to give me a little more height. Same for the other side and they're going to go right underneath the legs on the outside. Then grab yourself a 2x4 and you can just stick it underneath there about halfway. And so when you put the 2x4 under, you're going to put it under off center just a little bit because there's that middle leg. And you're going to have to try to balance it as you lift up. It'll want to tip one way or the other just a little bit. But I'm only sticking the 2x4 in about halfway. And we're just going to pry it up while holding the top of it. And you go up just until you feel the battery fall back against the wall. All right, so it popped into place and I pulled the boards out from underneath it. Now I'm just going to go ahead and slowly set it down on the ground and it's ready to go. Now all we have to do is put the screws in on the back side of the batteries. So now you can see we got the conduit box installed on top of the battery here and then the inverter is now installed on top of the conduit box. It really wasn't that bad getting this up here. What we did is just set it up here and just kind of tipped it up. And then you could just lift up and kind of set it into place. Went in quite easily. You'll see the holes here. So what we did is we, we set it up here. There's these two brackets on the side, on both sides here. One here and then one on the other side that you're supposed to screw in once you get it set in place. But we waited to screw that in until we popped these guys here in first so we could line up all these holes and then that lined up the holes of the inverter to the conduit box inside here and one thing you want to make sure that you do before you put this on and before you even put this on is to put your conduit in first because it works best if you i'll show you here in a minute but if you put this put install these first and then slide the box in and then screw the box here and then just keep building up from there so over here, we have it all prepped and ready to put this conduit box on. And that'll just simply go in here like this. It works best if you put the nuts on the back side or on this side over here to hold these in place so they don't fall down while you're trying to finagle it into place all right so next we'll put the nuts on here and cinch it all together and put the screws into here to bolt this down and then they also the conduit boxes come with little plugs for when you're not using it with an inverter on top so we'll put all these plugs in here all right so we got all the communication wires run we got everything all hooked up except for the grid power so we did our uh, ethernet cable gets hooked into that port there this is my master battery here so it goes here first and then it goes to battery number two over there and then we're calling this one battery number three so the inverter gets plugged into the top port here and then we plug into this uh, battery com here and that one goes over to the battery over here which i got the cover on comes into battery com and then there's one that goes out from battery com and goes over to the third and final battery there. So when you do your lugs up here, um, they get tightened down to 165 inch pounds, I believe is what it was. I'll have to refer to the manual. Uh, you wanna make sure you use a torque wrench so you don't strip them out. And also it's not a bad idea to come back uh, 24 hours later and just recheck them. So uh, they also recommend that you use these little ferrules that just slips onto the end of the wire and then you crimp it on with a uh, heavy duty crimper this guy here so you stick it in and you just simply jack this up and it will crimp down onto the wire and that's just to help ensure that you get a better connection all the tools that I have used in this video that I did not get from signature solar I'll put a link in the description for you so you can find them easily so now that all the batteries are hooked up we're gonna get the grid power hooked up next but I'm still waiting on some connectors that uh, will hopefully be here in the next couple of days then we could fire up the inverter and have it hooked up to the house and start using some of the battery power that's stored up in them. So the next thing you want to do is get all your batteries programmed. They need you make sure all the breakers are shut off 
and then you got to go through and program each one of the batteries so they communicate with the inverter. So I'm going to show you how to program your wall mount batteries to your inverter. This is one of three batteries. I'm going to have it set so this one is uh, the master battery. But the first thing we need to do to program is you actually got to have all your dip switches in the up position. And then you're going to turn this guy on. And then we're going to press and hold the second button from the right for five seconds. And then release. What pops up here is your RS-485 protocol setting and your CAN protocol setting. So you're going to change both of those to the, your inverter type. So in my case, we're going to go to the Lux, which is already on there. Hit enter. And then we're going to scroll down and do the CAN protocol and put that one to Lux. And I already changed the setting. That's why it's already there. Otherwise, it'll be up here on GrowWatt as a default. So hit enter and then hit back. And then you can go ahead and change your dip switch to the appropriate setting. So the master dips, the master battery gets a dip switch set at one. I'm going to do this for batteries two and batteries three. So battery two will get uh, the, the first one will stay up, but the second one will be in the down position. And then battery three will be uh, both the first two switches will be down. So after you get a program, you want to just go ahead and power cycle it again. And then that'll save the settings. So if you want to see if your settings took effect and they saved, you just go ahead and uh, power cycle it. Once it turns back on, you can push this button here and you'll see the protocol is set to Lux on the RS-485 and also on the CAN it is set to Lux. So you know you're good to go. So before you do the next battery, you want to make sure to have this battery off. And before you even do any of the batteries, you want to make sure all the breakers are off. All the breakers are off on these, so I've got no power going from battery to battery. And then you also want to make sure that the BMS is off on um, all the batteries too before you do the programming. So we're going to go ahead and just shut this one off and move to the next one. So a little tip for you. They don't give you a whole lot of room to fasten the uh, or to put the cables on. It's Really, they should have given more room in here. And I found it was hard to snap the, the, the lugs onto the battery. So what I found worked really well is to just loosen up this um, piece here and just slide it back. You'll slide that up into the box. And that gives you just a little more room to be able to clamp that terminal on there. And then after you get it on there, you think you got it on there good, go ahead and just give it a good old thump here with, the, with your hand to make sure you got it on there good. I found that. Um, with some of them, it looked like I had it on there good, and I thought I had it on good, but then when I gave it a tap, I, helped, I, I felt it and heard it click into place all the way. So it just, it's a good idea just to double check to make sure they're clamped on all the way. Another little, another little tip I have for you is, I don't know if it broke in shipping or if I broke it on install or what, but I had one of these covers where the, the little tabs here, um, they broke off. And so they're used with these screws on the top here so that you can put the cover on and not have to take and put a, a screwdriver to each one of these four screws to get the uh, cover on and off. So you can just use these little thumb screws here. But I had two of them break. What I found is this cover is the exact same cover that is right here upside down. And the bottom side does not use these tabs. It only uses the four screws. So you can go ahead and just take the cover off the bottom side and put it up here and then take the broken one, put it down there, and you'll be good to go. Once you get this all powered up, you're going to want to get your Wi-Fi connected to your device so you can do the firmware updates and so you can monitor it remotely. The one thing they don't tell you in the manual is you'll need a customer ID, and that customer ID code is signature. I don't know why they don't tell you in the manual, but uh, just to save you the headache, it is signature, simple. So everything else is pretty straightforward. Just go through the process on monitor.eg4.com or whatever the website is in the manual. All right, so I've got my PV wires already hooked up, and I forgot to do a video to show you how I did that. Uh, so I'm going to give you a quick demonstration here. Here's the PV wire. I use this wire stripper here. It's got a gauge that I could set, so it strips the right amount, the perfect amount every time. It's a nice stripper. I'll put a link in the description for you. Um, very handy tool to have. So now that I got it stripped, you're going to put this ferrule on the end of the wire, and you need to use this here crimper. 
And again, this crimper, I'll put a link in the description for you for that. So you'll see that I shaved a little bit off of the wire to kind of taper it to make it easier to slide this in. And then you go ahead and just push this into the ferrule. Once it's in, you can go ahead and squeeze down and crimp. And that's going to leave you a nice square crimped fitting. And then to put the wire in here, you stick a screwdriver in and you just lift up and that slides in. Another thing that I would highly recommend doing is labeling all the wires. So every connection point, I put a sticker with a wire. So this is inverter one. So I did invert. So I did a one and then this is string D. So I got string A, B, C, and D. And so every time that there was a seam, we put a sticker on there with that. I bought this cheap little uh, labeler on Amazon. It was 20 bucks. It was super easy to connect to the phone. It, the fastest I've ever had anything hook up to a phone via Bluetooth. Very easy to use, user friendly, worked out slick. So again, I'd highly recommend if you don't have a labeler, get a labeler to do all your PV strings so you can keep them all organized and you don't get them crisscrossed and mixed up. And there's a link in the description down below for this guy as well. So all the stuff that I purchased for my setup, I purchased from Signature Solar. And I'll put a link in the description down below. Go ahead and click that link. Check them out. If you found this video helpful, please hit that subscribe button. I'll be doing more videos on the system, different parts of the install. I'll get a video up of uh, how we installed the panels on the roof. And I do plan on expanding on the system. We plan on adding three more inverters and another 40 to 50,000 more uh, watts of PV power to our property in hopes to sell it back to the grid and uh, have a little passive income coming in. Thanks again for watching and uh, hit that subscribe button and follow along.